the story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. And whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trusts. I will exercise my art solely for the cure of my patients. The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro Goldwyn Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Blair General Hospital, one of the great citadels of American medicine. A clump of gray-white buildings planted deep in the heart of New York. A nerve center of medical progress where great minds and skilled hands wage man's everlasting battle against death and disease. Blair General Hospital. Where life begins, where life ends, where life goes on. Jimmy, there's only one type of problem case in medicine that a doctor can't do anything about. And that's the problem of the patient himself. Well, it's a little hard to imagine a case without a patient, Dr. I mean, mean the patient who won't cooperate. Oh. No, I can quote you one example after another, right from my own practice. Well, way back in the 1934, there was a... Mm-hmm. All right, I'll buy it. This is one of those discussions that could last for hours, but I've got a night off, and I've got a date. Ooh, well, now, <laughs> different. Miss Verna, Jimmy, huh? That's oh. right. <laughs> Hello, Diana. Hi, Jimmy. Well, 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 Miss Verna. Come in. Come right in. Well, I, I don't want to interrupt anything, but... Jimmy, I'm ready to go whenever you are. Leaving right this minute. Now, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. I want to look at this young lady. It's a new dress, Dr. Gillespie. Like it? Yes. Yes, indeed I do. (laughs) (laughs) Pardon me, Doctor. All right, Parker. Spit it out. What do you want? Well, if I may, I'd like a word with Dr. Kildare. Of course, Parker. What is it? Well, I don't know exactly. But anyway, there's a man out here to see you. Well, I was just leaving. Well, he says it's important, Dr. Kildare. His name's Eddie Chun. Eddie? Ooh, the tarnation's Eddie Chun. Well, you remember Dr. Gillespie? He runs the Moon Temple Inn down in Chinatown. Oh, yes. yes. Send him in, Parker. All right, Dr. Kildare. Uh-huh. Sorry, Diana, but it shouldn't take long just to find out what he wants. Just go right in, Mr. Chun. A thousand thank you. Hello, Eddie. How are you? Greetings, firstborn, and many respects to you, old philosopher. Mr. Mr. Jones. Uh, This is Miss Verner. Hello. I'm honored. Jimmy, by all tradition, we should continue these formalities for 20 or 30 minutes. Yes, I agree with you. My grandfather, I feel, will not be so modern when you talk with him. It's about him that I've come. Oh? He's dying, Jimmy. Oh, from what cause? Two, actually. You may not have known, but... He suffered injuries in an auto wreck six months ago. His health has declined steadily ever since. And the second reason is that he's decided to die. Well, Jimmy, there's a case for you. He has agreed to permit an examination, nothing more. And only if I brought you within the hour. Ling Ko is a very stubborn man. Ling Ko? Are you a grandson of Linko's? I have that honor. Well, do you know him, Dr. Gillespie? Oh, for 25 years or more. Well, I haven't seen him lately, though, Jimmy. I'm going with you. Then you will come, Jimmy. Well, I... And Diana, it looks as though we're... Well, I, I don't see why, Jimmy. We were going out to dinner anyway. Why can't we eat somewhere in Chinatown? Afterwards, I mean... A very good idea, all right. Then we'll all go. <laughs> This examination is permitted only in deference to excessive arguments by a firstborn grandson. Who is humbly grateful. I understand, Mr. Ling. Now, 
and take a breath and let it out slowly. That's it. Hmm. Examination is permitted, but no treatment, Dr. Kildare. A man should live out his years and accept his fate. Yes, Mr. Ling. Now breathe again, same way. Jimmy, it, there's an area here on the upper left leg. Uh, keep the stethoscope on it. Oh, I, I'll try some pressure. All right. There. Now, any effect? Mm, wait. Yes. Yes, it's slowing down. Well, bradycardia effect. Well, that's it, then. Yes, let me try the stethoscope over the area you were pressing. It is most undignified for elderly men to be discussed like pork in marketplace. Just a second, Mr. Ling. Yes, you can hear the surge. You take the stethoscope, Dr. Glasby. Yeah, thanks. Mr. Ling, I gather this leg was rather badly injured in that car wreck. Is that right? Very badly, Dr. Kildare. Well, that settles it, Jimmy. And I say there are enough collateral channels open to justify immediate surgery. Might this unworthy one inquire result of examination? Well, Mr. Ling, you have an arteriovenous aneurysm. The result of those leg injuries. Indeed. It is most gratifying to no cause of one's death. Death? <laughs> oh, who says you're going to die? Kildare will fix you up. Examination is permitted. Treatment, no. Well, why do you feel that way about it, Mr. Ling? These eyes have seen many years, Dr. Kildare. This heart leans now toward old friends who are gone. This brain has advice no longer for the young. To live beyond one's time is improper. One loses face. Ah, you know older than I am. Each must make his own decision, Dr. Gillespie. <laughs> but you have another possible 15 or 20 years, Mr. Ling, if you want them. To old men, one passion is permitted, gambling. To cling to life only that one may indulge such foolish pursuit is unseemly. One loses face. Better to make way for the young. <sighs> Mr. Ling, I don't know what to say to you. Jimmy, what can you say? Usually when you find an attitude like his, there's some reason for it. That's right, Diana. Ordinarily, the patient's life is messed up emotionally, or he's suffering such pain that he wants to die. But not Lin Ko. He's entirely philosophical about it. There should be some way of convincing him. It's such a waste to do nothing but just sit and Well, wait for... this one hopes that you and Miss Verna are finding our cuisine satisfactory, Jimmy. Oh, wonderful, Eddie good deal more satisfactory than your grandfather's attitude. Jimmy, what can one do? He's accustomed to giving advice, not taking it. I hope Dr. Gillespie was not offended. Oh, no, he just thought he should get back to the hospital. You never can get him to eat at this time of night. Jimmy, what is wrong with my grandfather? Well, it's a combination of effects from that leg injury. You see, normally a blood supply is carried by the arteries from the heart to all the tissues of the leg and is then returned to the heart through the veins. But that injury of your grandfather short-circuited an artery and a vein high up in his leg. I see. Well, I think I do. <sighs> well, there are enough collateral channels open to keep the lower leg alive, but the main circulation is passing through the short circuit. The heart has to beat faster to handle the increase in fluid, and that raises the blood pressure. It's a vicious circle, and it goes on building up until something gives way. Usually the heart. I see. How long do you think? About a month, Eddie. And yet, through surgery, he could be cured. Oh, yes. By eliminating the short circuit. I've seen amazing recoveries. Sometimes in a matter of days. Uh, life does have its ironies. And now it is time for my big surprise. The cook has prepared special for you, Sui Chi Yuk. <laughs> Sounds terrific, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Oh, you have to like it, Jimmy, or the cook loses face. Uh, pardon me now. Uh-huh. He's awfully nice to me. Did he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, he's great. And I love this place. Do I sound silly if I say it's romantic? No, as a matter of fact, it is romantic. Moon Temple Inn. Even the name, it's like pagoda bells and pear blossoms. Yeah. Yeah, it is. 
Jimmy, what are you thinking about? Hmm? Well, Linko. Oh. You know, there may be a way of changing his mind. It's a chance, anyway. What do you mean? Have you ever heard of saving a life by threatening a face? No. <laughs> of course you wouldn't. Neither have I. But I think it's worth trying. <laughs> Dr. Gillespie, you have an appointment in ten minutes. Oh, yes. Bless Jim Bear. And how should I know? He hasn't been around the hospital all morning. For all I know, he didn't even come in last night. Oh, maybe he had too much Chinese food. Uh, too much Chinese aneurysm. I just think it's a crying shame that Mr. Ling Ko's taking that attitude. Well, now, old Snoopy's finding out about cases before they even come to the hospital. Oh, I'm not. I mean, I just hear things. That's well, all. Well, I'll bet you do, Biggie. Oh. Good morning, Dr. Gillespie. Well, Jimmy, oh, good morning. Good morning. I was just preparing your description for the Missing Persons Bureau. Oh, I had to go out on a case, or mm. rather the preliminaries to a case. By the way, I've decided to use cryotherapy in that operation on Ling Ko's leg. Huh? See, by packing the leg in ice, I can slow the metabolism and reduce the possibility of any well, kind what of... What makes you think you'll even have a chance to operate? Oh, well, that's all taken care of. That's what Eddie Chun and I were doing this morning. Uh, Here, take a look. Uh, Chinatown news. I can't read this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Neither can I, but I have a translation of the item Eddie managed to have planted in this morning's edition. Hmm. Uh. What are you talking about? Now, let's see. Reads, quote, It is a great misfortune when an elderly scholar, long honored for his wisdom and understanding, chooses voluntary oblivion rather than face the problems of life. Now, no, wait a minute. It wait. has been wisely said that cowardice is one of the unforgivable faults, unquote. Well, there it is. Eddie thinks it'll work. Work? How? Oh. It's a matter of oriental philosophy. You see, if Ling Ko were to follow through with his decision after this, he'd lose face with his friends. And to a Chinese traditionalist, that's a fate worse than death. Ah, <laughs> Jimmy, you're out of your mind. <laughs> Maybe. Anyway, Eddie agrees with me, and he ought to know. I've tentatively scheduled an operating room for day after tomorrow. Ah, it'll never work. I'll get it. Miss Parker speaking. Uh, yes, just a moment. For you, Dr. Kildare. Mr. Lincoln Coe's calling. Uh-oh. Like to arrange for an ambulance, Dr. Gillespie? Uh, Kildare speaking. Dr. Kildare, most unfortunate thing done by you and unworthy grandson, Eddie June. Oh. Well, I, I think the end justifies the means. Means will lead to no end, Dr. Kildare. Later edition of paper carries message from this unworthy one saying... When man makes 99 good decisions, is wise to accept 100th decision without question. Yes, that's fine. Many friends have already sent assurances of high regard. Then you won't permit an operation? It is hoped that you and Dr. Gillespie will attend funeral when notified. But, Mr. Ling, Good I day, don't... Dr. Gildare. Apparently, it didn't work, Jimmy. No. The whole thing backfired. <laughs> We return to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. waiting to see you. New one or an old one? Well, a new one, I think. Her name's Sam June. June? Must be related to Eddie. Well, she's filled out a card here. So... Oh, here it is. Yes, husband Eddie June. She's his wife. Hmm. wonder what's wrong with her. Well, I'm not a diagnostician, Dr. Kildare. But 
Mm, well, that's it, huh? Maybe I'd better see her as soon as I get it. Confounded carnation. You know, Parker, there's one thing about Dr. Gillespie. He never loses his sunny disposition. Confident. If there's any more asinine method of wasting time, I've never heard of it. Parker, who's the girl in the outer office? No, this is a patient of Dr. Kildare. Oh, interesting case to me. Well, it might turn out to be. She's a granddaughter-in-law of Ling Cole. Oh, you don't say so. Well, what seems to be the trouble? So? Complaint, symptoms, you... She must have some reason for coming here, hasn't she? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, yes, she has a reason, all right. But I doubt if she has complaints, or does she, Parker? No, no, no. She seems quite happy about it, Dr. Kildare. Well, then I think we can... Wait uh... a minute. You haven't... Uh, no, not yet. You're merely accepting Parker's half-baked opinion. Well... Why, she wouldn't know a hypochondriac from a hypodermic in her stomach shoulder. Well, after 25 years around here, I can at least recognize a pregnancy case when I see one. Pregnancy? Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> so I'm led to believe. Oh, well, uh, I thought it might be something interesting. Now, there's a jaundiced attitude for you. What could be more interesting than birth? Uh-huh. New life, replacing the old, wondering whether it'll be a boy or a... What's the matter, Jimmy? Maybe an idea there. Where? Are you free this evening, Dr. Gillespie? No, confound it, no. Why? I thought you might enjoy an evening of Chinese checkers. Huh? It's all right, though. I'd rather take Diana anyway. Uh, what the tarnation are you talking about? Hello, Sally. I'd like to speak with Mr. Ling Ko. His phone number is... Uh... <laughs> betting on you, Jimmy. This time, I think you're going to win. Your move, Dr. Kildare. All right. There. Ah, yes. This piece, then, is moved so. Your left flank is stuck. Oh. Well, uh, let's try this. Your move, Mr. Ling? A highly commendable attempt, but with this move... Your right flank is stopped, Dr. Kildare. Oh, it is. Well, there isn't too much choice, so, uh... Ah, yes, indeed. And now... At this point, it would seem most dignified for a worthy opponent to concede. Not only dignified, <laughs> inevitable. I concede. I thought sure you had him that time. Mm-hmm. When youth bows to experience, no honor is lost. The wise parent often learns from the child his regret of this old one that he will not live to see firstborn son of Chun. Son? Well, I hate to disappoint you, but Mrs. Chun is going to have a girl. One thousand pardons for contradictions, Dr. Kildare. Horoscope has been cast. Child will be a boy. Oh, no, there's really no doubt about it. You see, this is a subject that's in my field. <laughs> in fact, I'll bet on it. Is policy of this unworthy one never to decline wager? Name amount, please. Well, the staff doctors aren't exactly overpaid. Say $50? Is done. All arrangements will be made. And, of course, they'll have to include an operation on that leg. Otherwise, you won't be here to pay me when the baby is born. That is meaning of arrangements, Dr. Kildare. Oh? $50 will be left in bank with full instructions. <sighs> left flank stopped. I think, though, that a man of strong gambling instincts would surely want to know the outcome of the bet. Just curiosity, if nothing else. Outcome is already known. Child will be a son. Right flank stopped. As for attraction in living to hold great-grandson in arms, must advise Linko has already nine great-grandchildren. Is no novelty. Your move, Dr. Kildare. Move? What move? For the second time, Mr. Ling... I concede. Jimmy, I put a lot of thought on this case during the last week, and I've come to the conclusion that the only way to get Ling Ko to submit to surgery is by starting with a full acceptance of his attitude and then using that attitude. 
Just how do I go about doing well, that? Well, this is just the trouble. In the first place, he's already suspicious of you. And in the second place, you Well, he's just too confounded young. Which brings us right around the bush to the place we started from. And leaves old Linko on his way to a funeral complete with firecrackers and rice cakes. And I guess all I could do under the circumstances is go down to my office and try to grow older as quickly as possible. No, 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 I didn't mean that, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, I know you didn't. Well, see you later. Ah, confounded tarnation. Parker! Parker! What on earth's wrong with you, Dr. Gillespie? Nothing's wrong with me. Call a taxi. What do you want a taxi for? You're not going out, are you? Of course not. I'm merely going to bring it up here and dissect it. What? Now get out of here and get me a taxi. how life seems to balance, Dr. Gillespie, one thing against another when one grows very old. You know, that's one thing young Kildare can't understand. The passions grow cold, as someone said, and then philosophy grows out of the ashes. It's same with young members of Ling family. They make the days noisy with wailings and pleas. Uh, this old one can find little peace. Well, they just don't understand how we can look at things differently. See? That you're young. Oh, same way with Kildare. He's a good doctor, all right, but sometimes his enthusiasm runs away with him. He has been most insistent. Yeah, sure, sure. He's thoroughly convinced the operation should be tried, even if there's only one chance in a hundred you'll live through it. Was understood operation is quite... Oh, no, 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 no. It's a long way from simple. Huh? Kildare simply can't get it through his head that man might want to be left alone. Live out his days in peace. He's feared there will be no peace. Relatives are most troublesome. Yes, yes. Too bad they won't let a man enjoy his last two or three weeks in calmness and meditation. Would cause them much happiness if this old one should submit to operation. Oh, yeah, I suppose it would. Dr. Kildare also. Oh. Please inform him operation will be performed tomorrow morning. You mean you... you, you tomorrow morning? Well, oh, by the great horn spoon. <laughs> Oh, come in, Dr. Gillespie. Well, Jimmy, I understand the surgery was a complete success. Your stooges certainly don't waste any time. Stooges? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, was it or wasn't it? It was. Dr. Gillespie, I still don't know how you got him to do it. I mean, change his mind. Well, it was merely a matter of the old understanding the old. Hands across the sea. Huh? Uh, and, of course, an application of oriental psychology. Tell me more, Doctor. After all, you know, there's more than one way of skinning a cat. Could be. Only where does oriental psychology come in? That's not a Chinese proverb. Well, now, Jimmy, I wouldn't be too sure of that. <laughs> you want to bet? <laughs> In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare. Once again, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Good evening, uh, most honorable friend. Good evening. Good evening. Trust everything is satisfactory. Oh, oh fine, fine. wonderful. Mr. Ling. You're looking very well, Mr. Ling. I've never felt better in entire life, Dr. Kildare. 
is feared this unworthy one faces prospect of many years more living. Oh, now, isn't that too bad? <laughs> what an unpleasant prospect. Prospect is not too displeasing, uh -oh. Dr. Gillespie. Mm -hmm. Dr. Kildare is, of course, most impolite to remind you of occasion for this banquet. However... Yes, I know. Eddie Tune double-crossed me and had a son. And I owe you $50. Uh -huh. ah, here you are. One thousand thank yous, Dr. Kildare. Dr. Gillespie, is thought of this old one that you might enjoy a game of Chinese checkers in quiet alcove across room? Oh, sure. Yeah, that sounds interesting. Of course, I've never played the game. It's very simple. Young people will excuse old ones. Oh, sure. Right. Go ahead. <laughs> we'll have dishes sent over. This way, Dr. Gillespie. Mm -hmm. After you have learned game, perhaps small wagers could be made. Oh, sure, Mr. Lang. Yeah, why not? Uh-oh. <laughs> you suppose I ought to warn him? What good would it do? <laughs> He's stubborn enough to bet anyway. Sure he would. Well, he'll just have to learn for himself. So, then let's talk about us. Oh, not us. You. Hmm? About how you look in that gown, the way you're wearing your hair, in your eyes, and that smile that's just now breaking through. Mm. It sounds awfully nice to me. Mm -hmm. For a start. Good. Then what do you say we go on from there? You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by Les Crutchfield and directed by William P. Russo. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Virginia Gregg, Georgia Ellis, Tudor Owen, and Paul Fries. Dick Joy speaking. <laughs>